She's a doctor. Hi, I'm Dr. Dobek, and she's a dietitian. Hey, I'm Hannah Schuyler, and together we are the, the Doctor Dietitian, dietitian Collab. Collab. So today we are going to be talking about emotional eating and this emotional eating cycle that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us at some point in our lives can really relate this resonates with you and this topic. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk today, not just about defining what is emotional eating, what are the common triggers that make you feel this way? What makes you feel sad or depressed or stressed or even happy that mm -hmm. makes you feel triggered to eat? And then ultimately, what is the cycle that ensues thereafter? And then we're going to spend a lot of time actually giving some, some real tips that will work, some actionable steps that you can do to be more mindful, to try to help identify the triggers, to help to eliminate this. So we are going to be talking all things about breaking the cycle. I'm going to ask, are you an emotional eater? No, I didn't I'm think not. So. Are you? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a cry. I'm a big crier. If I'm emotional. We're just going to cry. But uh, I'm sure that, yeah, when I'm stressed or something, I just don't probably pay attention to what I'm eating as much, if that makes sense, you know? I think that that is, I think, let me take my answer back. I, I am, I don't think I am anymore. I think that I, maybe I didn't define it as emotional eating. And today I hope that this podcast episode really helps someone to be like, oh, well, I actually am doing that, but I just never like maybe defined it as such. Yeah. I know that when I was a resident and that is my surgical training after medical school, you have to do five years. And I remember in the beginning, my intern year, I distinctly remember kind of like when I was reading about this whole cycle and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, man, I absolutely can identify that time being so uh, stressful and honestly mm -hmm. so traumatic. I've talked a lot about almost blacking out that experience of yeah. no sleep. So that already kind of knocks you off of your kind of just, you know, making sure your basic needs, like getting enough yeah. sleep and getting, you know, getting rest and, and getting fluids and eating uh, proper meals to nourish your body, like all of that be damned. Like there was no That's time all window, for yeah. all of that. And I remember just being on rotations and the, for me, the, the gap between my medical school training rotations, knowledge base and real world medicine of now you're a surgeon. And it was, I, I was just so behind. I felt so dumb. I felt like I was always the dumbest on the team. And every day you would go and you had to be there in the fives you had to be there then. And then you would stay until like six to six. And mm -hmm. that was every day. And on the weekends, you would stay for 30 hours. So you would work 12 times seven and then another 30 hour shift on the weekend or however it worked out. And I just remember standing in my kitchen at the time and my sister had a, her bridal shower and I was an intern first year resident and she had all of these cupcakes. And I've talked about this before, but I just stood there, remember, and I could not stop. And I must have eaten like 20 cupcakes and I just ate the tops off of them. And I then at some yeah. point, like I start, I felt so like, what the hell are you doing? And then I felt like I was spiraling. And then I just started eating just the tops off of them. And then I like, wasn't even like using a fork or like cutting them and all of that stuff. And yeah. I remember just being so disgusted with myself. I felt so gross. I felt so out of control, so powerless. Yeah. And I, and it, and I, and it was, a, it was a cycle and I knew yeah. like, just screw it. Just come home, eat the rest of those damn cupcakes that are out of there and don't do that again. And then I did it again with something else, but it was just like right. very, very memorable that whole moment. Well, and I think that, I mean, that's a, that's, that's such a like extreme example because obviously yeah. you were like pushed to the brink. Yes. And, um, I think that that's a lot of times too, like even for myself, like when I think of like emotional eating, like that's kind of what I'm thinking of. It's this like, it's like, like extreme kind of thing. But I think yeah. in reality for most people, it's not that it is these smaller, smaller moments, but maybe happening more frequently. And I think that's why it's kind of like, no, I don't do it. Oh, but maybe I do. Like it's, it's kind of hard to be like, 
it's very, it's not super precise, I guess. And there's no like, yes, you have to eat 20 cupcake tops for it to count as emotional yeah. eating. Like, no, it can also just be, you know, I recently, I have an example of this was one night, obviously we've got the baby, we've been busy. It's been a lot. It's emotional. We're, you know, all of this going on. And one night it was late and I, had, I was making dinner and I was making like, I don't remember fish or chicken with vegetables, like, you know, a normal, pretty normal dinner at our home. And in the middle of it, I was like, I'm ordering pizza. Mm. And I was just like, literally in the middle of cooking dinner, I ordered delivery pizza. Cause I was just like, I, this, this food that I'm cooking right now is just not going to like scratch what I need right now. Like mm -hmm. I need my, you know, me, you know, I love Domino's. Like it's my favorite. So I was like, I got to have it. And it's like, all right. And they can be here in 20 minutes. Like it's going to take them just as long for them to get here as it is for me to finish this meal. Like, yeah. so I did, and it was just like, I do it. And there was mm -hmm. nothing. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have done if I had eaten that dinner, if I would have then gone and, you know, have ice cream or done something else. Like, but in that moment, it was like, this is what, I, what needs to be done. So let's dissect that moment because that's a lot of it is okay. Identifying what triggered you to feel like, I don't care about this stupid, healthy, like lean right. protein and a veggie thing that you know, <laughs> we preach. I, I need dominoes. So why do you feel like it was just like, screw it kind of mentality? Cause you got like a lot going on and you just wanted something to like look forward to. <laughs> I, I feel like it may have been, and I don't even remember when this was like, it's been a couple months since this happened. So I, I probably was just tired. Maybe it was a Friday night or something. And like, I was like, I want some, like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like a Friday. Like, I don't remember what, it, what the reasoning really was truthfully, but it was just like, I just, I just wasn't in a space where that was going to like satisfy. Mm. Probably I needed to have a conversation with somebody in reality, or I needed to get out of my house or I needed, mm. you know, some sort of other type of support. But in that moment, the support that I think I probably was going to get was going to be that pizza. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. I, I, okay. So yes, I know for, with all certainty, we all feel that way, whether it's, I'm bored. It's Sunday. I've now watched a million episodes of whatever. I haven't even taken my pajamas off. I haven't done anything like, well, let me just eat something because well, Sunday fun day, or like we validate it. We're like what you just said, like it was Friday night and it didn't feel like a Friday night. It just felt like another mundane day in the life. Yeah. And this is like boring or whatever. And right. you just, you just want something like I yeah. want something to look forward some to. And I love of, like, yes. Or like some semblance of normalcy probably too. Like, yeah, it used to be Fridays were fun. And now it is, it's like, well, Fridays it's bedtime at seven 30, just like it is on Wednesdays and just like it is on Sundays and whatever. That's so real. It's so, I think we all feel that it's like <sighs> the responsibilities of life and that, and, and so much of your life right now, especially is out of your control. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. It's like, well, I want it. So guess what? I, I can easily order this and get that. And yeah, yeah, I'm an it's... adult with adult money and the Domino's app. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, seriously, you know? I think, yeah, for me, I, there's a lot of internal talking going on in my head that people are like, oh, you know, how do you do it all? Or what are you talking about? I have like crippling anxiety. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like some of the, the decisions that I'm making in my life are maybe out and out insane, you know, like you're trying to put like, you think about all the things you're putting at risk and all that. And so, yeah, I get wound up when I think about like the gravity of all of it and mm -hmm. that, that feeling of anxiety or like, you're so tense, you're so tight, you just like you want something, then yeah, I normally will just burst out of my house and I have to like get out of it. And right now my yeah. kids, um, you know, if Aaron's there, if he's not there, like, what is there really to do? Like, what is you, there? Yeah, like what you, you still have other responsibilities. There? I need an outlet. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, the outlet may be food for some, it may be alcohol for others. It may be, I need to go mm -hmm. smoke a joint or a or a cigarette yeah. or like I yeah. need to um go do something. drugs or like I need to buy something online shopping. Gambling. Like it is 
gamble. I need like a, like a quick high, or I'm just going to like mindlessly scroll on the internet and just scroll on yeah. social and just like, I need this edge to go away by some means. And, and if the Domino's is something that when you were a kid and it was Friday and your mom was like, let's do it, let's get Domino's. And then you're kind of associating that day of the week with that particular food. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's like that. So yeah. I think, yeah, let's, let's talk about like different triggers that people have. So yeah, there's stress um, Mm -hmm. and that can make you feel very particular. Like maybe it makes you crave something like the chocolate chips or the pizza or the bag of chips. And you're almost not even tasting it. You're just like mindlessly eating it um, in the whole thing as well. Next is boredom. Like we talked about this yeah. feeling of loneliness and food mm-hmm. kind of being that old faithful friend. How do well, you feel and actually, about that? I want to go back to something you said earlier, because it came to my head and then I lost it and then it came back. You talked about having control and that's a huge thing with people with food specifically. And this is where disordered eating can come into play, but also not even in those situations, like in every day, like food is something that everybody <laughs> has some understanding of, and they have a very personal understanding of it. You Mm. know exactly what foods you like. You know exactly what ways you like them prepared. You can tell, you you can pick that out and say, yes, that is the one that I like. And I'm the only one who can know that. And I did a, when I first became a dietitian, I worked in a hospital and we would see that a lot with patients that everything else outside of their their life at that moment was very out of their control. They were in the hospital. They had doctors and nurses overseeing mm. their care. They couldn't within, with a lot of things, couldn't make decisions. Of course, you know, there's always decisions made by patients, but like you're very limited in that. And food was the one thing that they knew. They may not understand the medical procedures. They may not understand the terminology, all of these things, but they were like, I know what a burger should taste like. Mm. And that burger was not what I wanted it to taste like. And so I'm going to complain about it. And so it it's, it's not, this isn't necessarily in that like emotional eating thing, but like, it is something that we very personally and intimately have control over in our lives. And so I think that sometimes too, when we're kind of spiraling in those situations, it's like, or like you said, it's an old, it's an old reliable. I can go back to mm. these things that I know I have control over and I know that I'm right in my opinion on them because it's my opinion about me. Absolutely. I, I still go back to this all the time. I think that's the number one reason why people are reluctant to having surgery is the mm-hmm. fear of the unknown of what eating will look like. I mm-hmm. like food. I need to eat. I don't want to be confined or punished to this bland, flavorless diet yeah. that is not... You know, it's like, I know myself, I know I'm going to want X, Y, or Z, especially in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like, let's say holidays, um, and you know that your mom is going to make this very specific um, stuff, I'll just talk about like, I know that my mom does make like a very specific stuffing. Like she actually gets the bread, like we get the bread and we like dry it out the night before. And then that's mm-hmm. like the only time a year that we don't do so- stove top. Sorry if I know that you're a cook, but it was like the only time that she would whip this very particular mm-hmm. and she would like, oh my God, like stuff the turkey with it. It was so amazing. Um, and if you were to tell me, or if I had to have the thought that on Thanksgiving, you, Betsy, were not allowed to, to have that very particular thing while everybody else indulged in it. And it was so like, mm, like that ratatouille, like, oh my gosh, rushing me back to that, me being seven years old, I can see where I'm mm. sitting at that table, you know, then you feel like you're excluded. Like you said, like, is life worth even living if I don't get to have those moments for the very specific yeah. things? I do love stuffing. You caught me on that one too. I know. But, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of things like that that are very like, you know, when we go to the movies and you smell the, the popcorn, popcorn, like, well, I have to have it there. Well, yeah, because when you see every single other person and they're also feeling the same way, like, I don't want to be left out. I, I, mm-hmm. and it's almost like, you know, Laura, our bariatric therapist, she talks a lot about like making the decision, like struggling, like "Mm, that smells good. I think I want it. I shouldn't have it, but I kind of want it. And it is a movies and I've been pretty good lately. And then that like back and forth and that like struggle. And then you finally decide just to buy it. And that kind of like, finally, like, fine, you made a decision. You can move on or Mm -hmm. you make a decision to not do it, not have it. 
to not have it. But when you make that decision, you have to kind of go with it. And yeah. I think that's a lot about ingrained habits and mm-hmm. nightly routines, especially. I think like during the day, I don't think people really have as many fierce habits as they do after work when it's finally like their alone time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I'm, I I hear that all the time from people. They're like, yeah, I'm fine during the day or also not good, but they're like, you know, I don't even really, I'm not really even hungry during the day or I skip meals during the day and it doesn't bother me. But as soon as like, it's after dinner, like I, something's just, it just changes. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I need it. And it's almost like, yeah, I mean, I'm again, guilty of this. I sit down and watch TV in the evening, whatever. And you do, it's like, if you get into the habit, uh, it's pairing habits. Right. And so oh. you pair that habit with, Hey, when I watch TV, I'm going to also eat a bowl of ice cream. And like, it's very easy to make that connection. Yeah. But it's not hard to that, for that to become a thing that I was doing that when I was pumping. So a couple months ago, I mean, I'm still am, but when I would pump at night, it would be late. I was by myself, like watching TV kind of thing. And it was like, I had to have my bowl of ice cream with that. And some of it was like, yes, I was hungry because I was breastfeeding and pumping and yeah. like, it, you know, like all of that. But it also had just become like, this had become a habit and finally I kind of realized it and also like went through it. You go to finally get to a period where like that insane hunger drive disappears. And so it's not one way too, but I was just like, just don't do it for a couple of nights and like, see how you feel. And it's like, it pretty quickly was like, okay, yeah, you don't need to have a bowl of ice cream every single night, but it was very easy for that to become a habit for me. Without a doubt. No, I mean, I get that too. Like since I was a little girl, probably like a toddler, my mom always had dessert and we would always mm-hmm. every single night have like a piece of pie or something like that. And it was like, okay, what's the snack after dinner? Like, what are, what are we going to do? Even like Dunkin' Donuts. Like I literally would have a donut mm-hmm. after dinner at night, like every night, every yeah. single night. And I always wonder like, even if, and my parents meant well, and that was just, yeah. that's just how it was. And I think that was just the we way, the same show way. Love. we pretty and much had a dessert almost every night, I would say every night, a hundred percent, every single night there was a dessert. And then, you know, I was a swimmer in high school and things like that. And I always wonder if my habits were like different then, like, would my swimming have been better? And like, you know, you just, you just don't know. Cause you're mm-hmm. like, this is fine. And we used to drink, I know we call it pop. We used to drink a lot of cherry Coke ah. and regular Coke and crap every night and orange juice every morning to start the day and pop to mm-hmm. end the day and, you know, all the things. Yeah. And so there's so much about like your environment and your, and your culture and your upbringing and, and the way that you feel when you have certain things and the way other people are there. And it's just, it's like a part of it. And it's, you have to kind of like mentally get past that. And when you understand the triggers, we're going to talk about how we can kind of break through and make a decision not to to succumb to that bowl of ice cream and all the other things and 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 just be more mindful of it all. So I think there's also a lot of social pressure that like, hey, I'm gonna have a drink tonight. Are you gonna have a drink? Why well, don't I want to drink alone? Well I guess come on, let's just do one. We'll just do it to, like or you know, yeah. just I don't want to eat this without you doing it. And so there's also that. And then I think that's a lot about, we talked about support systems after having surgery, like people don't get it. Well, they don't want to get it because if they're not ready to change and they're not ready to give up whatever that is, they're going to make damn well certain that you feel like a shame for wanting more or not wanting to do that mm-hmm. anymore and to break that cycle and those habits and all of yeah. that stuff that's ingrained in you. For sure. And I think that, you know, then all of this also leads into like the negative emotions, like you know, we talked a little bit about stress and tiredness, but like also like, I don't know, maybe anger or sadness, or like we said, even happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think all of those really can lead into these. And like, then you, you mix those with other things and it can be like this perfect storm. So yeah, let's talk about the, so we're talking about the trigger starting the cycle Mm -hmm. and let's talk about what the cycle is in and of itself. So this is my definition of it. And I want to expand on kind of the whole entire thing. So like you said, an emotion happens. Um, you just feel overwhelmed. You feel a certain way so that you get triggered. And that gives you this feeling in your head. Like you were saying like, man, I was so hungry when I was breastfeeding and there's no doubt about it. I mean, you're burning a massive amount of calories to make food for someone else. And that does 
no doubt is your body is designed to be hunger hungry so that you would eat more. And so those are very legitimate things. But there is that feeling, and we talk a lot about food noise, that chatter in your head that you are mm-hmm. literally almost like obsessive thoughts that you have to, the only way to take this edge off or make this feeling go away to alleviate this trigger is to eat something and is probably something very specific. And mm-hmm. you have that. And then you finally, you give in, you find yourself, whether you're conscious or not conscious, some of our patients do. Um, some people do night eating and they don't mm-hmm. even really remember it. It's like, oh my God, in my sleep, I went there and I was doing this habit and I didn't even realize it. And you, you end up eating, you end up doing it. And then you eat maybe more than you wanted. Maybe you didn't want to even, if it was one scoop of ice cream, you kept it to that. Sometimes when you get that first taste, you're like, screw it. I want more. Cause you just get yeah, the taste. It's so good. The whole pint. Yeah. Screw it. I'm going to finish it. I won't buy it tomorrow. Or maybe you do just eat that little bit, but it's like, I didn't even want any of this. Like I, I, whether it's a lot of quantity or not, like you said, the 20 cupcakes might be an extreme example, but Whatever it is, it's something you didn't want to do and you know that and then you just feel like, again, this guilty, powerless, emotional feeling and then maybe that makes you even um, keep eating. It just keeps on on going there with the cycle. Definitely can spiral. For sure. So there's, I think, first understanding and this is is cliched and it's, but it's true. There is a difference between emotional hunger and physical hunger. And when you feel hungry, sometimes you are legitimately hungry because we have ghrelin, Mm -hmm. which tells our brain to eat more. We have leptin, which is our satiety hormone that goes up after eating. And so some of those who struggle with their weight, it is shown scientifically that from a hormonal balance standpoint, you have too much ghrelin and you have too little leptin and therefore you have this imbalance that causes you to want to eat more so there is that physical hunger and there's that hormonal factors to all of it and sometimes you think you're physically hungry but you're really just tired we know that um sleep manifests as hungers a lot of times so at night i'm like it's 11 p.m go to bed Betsy. go to bed, go to bed. yeah stop yeah. scrolling stop Date staring off into nothing or like what are you doing? And now you're like, yeah. I think I want a yogurt. No, yeah, no, of chips. Or like if you were just to sleep, you wouldn't feel that hunger because like you'd just be sleeping. Like maybe you are actually truly hungry, but like why are you awake to feel hungry, right? Just exactly. Go to, bed. go to sleep, my friends. Go to sleep. If you know sleep. like <laughs> sleep is everything. Listen to our podcast on that. We have so many thoughts about sleeping six to seven hours a night is so important. And if you don't sleep enough, it also kind of that feeling of control or like inhibitions, all of that thrown yeah. out the win- window when you're when you're tired and there's a lot of um changes in your brain and all that stuff that goes with it. Then there's emotional hunger, which is what we're talking about here, where out of the blue, it comes on and you crave very specific, just comfort foods. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it leaves you just feeling like, why did I do that? Why am I labeling this food as bad? Or like, why am I labeling, um, you know, this, why am I feeling guilty about a very particular thing? And you described Domino's pizza, but everybody has their thing. I used to eat when I was in college, stressed out of my mind, trying to get into med school. Like, I mean, it was a cutthroat, uh, we call them gunners. There's all these gunners and people and, oh, it was nasty. I did not like college. I did not have like this, like wonderful college experience, but I remember my thing then so I'm going to change my original answer. Yes, I'm an emotional eater, just like everybody. Um, I know. I, 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 as, as we were talking, I was like, wait, okay, I lied. I am. Um... I am. Now that we're really defining it here. Yeah, I was on the cycle. I used to get, I don't even know if they make them anymore. I'm sure they do. The um, Swedish fish box that had like literally like 75 servings in this box. Oh my and God. you'd rip open the bag and... I was always very specific. Like I wanted to end on a Swedish fish that had like a very specific kind of like crunch factor almost to it on the outside. And I was like, I wanted this like ratio of like crunch and like gooiness, like gel on the inside. Perfect and Swedish I would fish. eat so much, so much. I would just sit there and um, type on Instant Messenger, AOL Instant Messenger. Hey, and I, I would just eat 
Swedish fish, like bite, eat. And then you're like, oh, I just downed that whole thing. Didn't even notice it. Didn't realize that. No, a lot of like, this has come from education. Like everyone's like, oh, I know what to eat. But like, I was a smart girl, but I didn't know what to eat. I thought that that was like a healthier candy. Like truly, like I didn't even know about labels and sugar and any of it. Any of it. But side note, what was your AOL screen name? Dovecki. Dovecki. Okay. D-O-V-E-C-K-I-E, Dovecki. That is still a a nickname that I told you I wanted to adopt. No one, no one's adopted it. No one's adopted it. No. What was yours? Sorry, Bitsy. Um, I mean, it changed because I like AOL, like instant messenger probably came around when I was in like fifth or sixth grade, maybe. So my first one was like Snorlax something, which like from Pokemon, because I was like 10 or 11, you know, and then probably something with, I think, oh, I think Daisy girl, maybe with probably a U in the girl. That was my dog's name was Daisy. So I was probably, I think I was Daisy girl and then a number wow okay so, but please please remember this is like middle school so i know well be a little mine, friendly mine came out when i was a senior in high school yeah so i think I'm just that's when i got on it i'm just so so young i know you're so young i know we so just young. recorded a podcast and i was like god we're representing the 20s 30s and 40s on this podcast right uh, now i didn't even want to make it about were. age but here i am after and the you, fact you going can hear the zeros in the background here too Oh my gosh, I really don't. <laughs> so there are a lot of very powerful strategies to break the cycle. And we all need to want to do things. It's hard when we get comfortable and habits are habits and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk about five very important strategies to break the emotional eating cycle. So number one, you have to know your triggers. You have to identify Okay, I'm going to define this as a trigger. And you have to kind of understand your patterns. Like if Friday you feel like isn't fun and we're going to add food in to make it fun, then you have to kind of like catch yourself before you even start it. So a lot of people talk about journaling, like journaling their feelings, like food mood journals and understanding the patterns and writing things down and just kind of maybe when you see it in print or you kind of see your thoughts and you kind of go back in time and review them, it makes you or allows you to understand and recognize those behaviors a little bit better. What are your thoughts on writing things down and using a journal to help you to identify your triggers? To me, the the word journaling just stresses me out. I don't know what it is. I'm not a writing person. Like, you it's you'll see like you and I's texts and you send like these paragraphs and I'm like cool great (laughs) that's my response sometimes I could see it working but honestly like my thing is going to be like record a podcast episode and that's when you'll learn that you are an emotional eater (laughs) yes there you go probably more like to talk it out I mean I guess maybe it's kind of like internally journaling of like oh Mm -hmm. like I did I this happened to me with like the ice cream and the pumping I was like Hannah what like it just one night it kind of was like wait what because I went to like go get ice cream and I was like I'm like still hungry from dinner you know I yeah. wasn't you know I feel still felt like full like not even just like not hungry but I still felt full and I was like going into the freezer and it's like wait a second is this just I just have just developed this kind of subconsciously mm-hmm. and caught it so it was not like a I don't know something just clicked I guess but yeah do you journal I don't. I put a note. I don't officially like journal and write long paragraphs. I do have these huge notebooks that look like Bibles that yeah. I write in. As you see, I write down anytime I have a thought I or a to-do list item, I will write it. And then I actually kind of journal to you in our notes section on our iPhones. Like yeah. anytime I have like a longer thing, I will, you will. She'll just I'll write it out there. It's just like you hear something and then you start to reflect on that and then you expand on that. And um, it is, I do, I do love that. I think that like, we're all constantly on these like personal development journeys and like the things that we like, and you're just trying to get better. So I do write things down. I'm like, oh, wow, that was really, that was really good. And that was really helpful. So 
whatever you do, text it to a friend, send it. If a, if a meme catches your eye on yeah. Instagram and forward it, if you write it down physically, you write it in your notes section. I text mm-hmm. myself a lot too. Like I, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't and know I also, that. I text myself constantly every day. And I also um, DM myself constantly. At least someone's slipping into my DMs and it's me, me, myself. And, and it's I. you, you know, there's like a save button on Instagram, right? If you're just trying to send yourself something. I don't want to know about that. I okay. um, <laughs> you DM I, should, no. I just keep, I keep, yes, I keep forwarding like, oh, that's cool. I want to like do something like that. And there's so uh-huh. many, it's like overwhelming at this point. Like, oh, I like that sound or, oh, I like what they were doing there or that tip yeah. or that like, oh, wow, look at that. That's just a cool, I know you could save it, but I don't do that. I know I should. <laughs> okay. So number one, no yourself to improve yourself, identify your triggers. Number two is mindful eating. And we just recently did have in our mindfulness, our mindset, our project reset, we talk a lot about doing this. And for you as a dietitian, how do you feel or do you counsel people on, you know, or is this too like, I don't know, Pollyanna kind of annoying, like, pay attention to flavors and textures and your hunger cues and slow down and feel the food. And like, do you like, I, I know, I think this is actually really important for a few reasons. So especially people who say that they have a lot of cravings Mm -hmm. because sometimes when you have that like really strong craving, like we said, like you'll just do it and you don't even really taste it. So it is like, sometimes it's like, you know, you'll hear people say this and it, this it sounds a little wooey right some of it does and it's but it's like honor your craving so say it is the dominoes I'm just going to keep using my example say it's the dominoes okay you really want the dominoes maybe it wasn't the spur of the moment thing you've been thinking about it all week you want it you're going to have it but normally you would eat a whole pizza or you would eat four slices or whatever it might be okay well get the dominoes and take the one piece or two pieces or whatever it might be for you as an individual and take it, put it on a plate, bring it into the other room, sit at the table and actually eat your food versus bringing the entire pizza and setting it on the coffee table and eating it straight from the box. Because there's, there's going to be a different experience in those things, but the, put the pizza slice down in between bites really do chew thoroughly because it's going to, like you're talking about those hormones that actually does help to trigger that, that leptin hormone to release so that you feel fuller. So you're not going to end up feeling super stuffed and dissatisfied with that experience ultimately, because what happens if you eat the whole pizza, most likely you're not going to feel great afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so then it's this, like, then you end up in like a shame spiral of like, Oh my God, why did I just do that? And it's like, yeah, if you slow down, you enjoy what it is and then you can move on from it. And you can Mm -hmm. say, I satisfied that specific craving or whatever it might be. So, you know, I do think there's a lot to be said about mindful eating and, and this doesn't have to just be with these types of, you know, foods that we're, we're talking about, you know, these higher calorie or higher sugar, or you know, whatever these um, highly palatable foods, like this should really be true with your other meals. I mean, we should all be slowing down and eating more mindfully because we do, we eat too quickly. I have people a lot of times too, especially like after surgery who were like, I get full off of two bites. And I'm like, you don't actually get full off of two bites. You're taking big bites and you're not chewing them well. And it's mm-hmm. making you get that like pain that you're associating as fullness. And then you're hungry again an hour later because you had two bites. So it's like, Take your time, take smaller bites, chew thoroughly. You'll eat a little bit more, but that's not a bad thing, but you're going to feel satisfied for longer. So that's not necessarily like the emotional eating side of things, but more of the surgery side of things. But no, I do think that 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 can really help. And again, then you can, and sometimes you'll find too, it doesn't taste as good as you think. Mm. Do this. Like if you're somebody who is, is like struggling, you're on the fence, maybe you're, you're in one of these cycles do this with McDonald's French fries, eat McDonald's French fries slow. They don't taste good. Like they first they get cold. They're only, they are, they are good for about four seconds when they come out of the fryer and then they're too cold. It's my personal thought on McDonald's French fries, but you'll eat one or two of them this way. And then you're going to get that weird greasy taste in your mouth. Like it's just not going to be a pleasurable experience. <laughs> you're like, Oh, this isn't even that good. 
Yeah, it's like you're at a Michelin fine, three star yeah. fine dining thing, and you're just yes. like eating the bite. And think of it, yeah, that's such a funny thought. Like, you never see someone like, let me just really go slow, put my favor. This there's French no fork, so like, yeah, let me like, there's, yeah, let I'm me gonna just... shove five fries in my mouth at once. Oh yeah, that's that's the only way. One at a time even is not good. You have to have like a big meaty bite of those, right. like. But like, take, but like, slow down with it. Like, take, I promise you'll be like, wait, it tastes like old grease. <laughs> it really does. And, you know, another thing about being mindful is if you are eating with others, I, I love on the weekends, at least one weekend day, I will ride my bike to Starbucks and then I just sit there for a little bit and I love it. And I just like that pretty much one of the only times in the week where I just kind of slow down and like, look up and look around yeah. and um one of my kids will always go with me and we're there but I watch I people watch and mm -hmm. you know you watch the patterns of people and talk about patterns it's the same people every day that's like your neighborhood Starbucks like everybody like, they'll start to adjust you by name and then that that becomes a thing and there's obviously the smells and all that and people go there together and you can see they're like on coffee dates and they get these drinks some of them healthier than others and mm -hmm. and you just watch them sit there and then you just drink it quickly because you're not paying attention at all you're trying to pay attention to the conversation and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff and um and I think it's hard to be mindful sometimes when you're with others and you're trying to keep up with the conversation like you forget like oh I just ate a lot or oh I didn't eat anything or yeah and then you're hungry later like it, that, that also like kind yeah. of feeds into it um it, now it can but also sometimes it helps you slow down because like, that's you know, true because you're actually like enjoying the conversation eating, and yeah. yeah you're not like just woofing it in like that would be kind of yeah. a weird um almost rude thing so yeah exactly so yes but it might maybe with a drink it's a little different with, like, yes like, yeah then I could see just yep, everything's attention. whoops that went down so easily get mm -hmm. me another we're having so much fun keep the good times rolling keep yeah. it coming and then there you go yeah so you feel these feelings, you now know your triggers, you've slowed down, you're more in the moment, you're more present. And instead of reaching for food, there are mm. lots of other ways that you can kind of cope with the feelings because feelings are meant for feeling and we're going to have them. And how do we keep them kind of loudly out there, not muted and numbing them? Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you feel like you do other than food that kind of helps to take that edge off in a more healthy, positive way? Well, I like to take a nice hot shower. Mm, to me, that's a that's great like, one. It's just a place we we talk about the shower way too much on this podcast. I know, but it's this just is like such one a of those good one, places. Though. It's just one of those places where your your physical body is being taken up by a very simple task that you don't have to think about. I have washed, washed and conditioned my hair how many times in my life that it's an, it's like brushing your teeth. Like it's just an automatic skill, right? At a certain mm -hmm. point, you don't have to think about it. So it, your body is somewhat occupied, but not in a way like, you know, running or something like that, where you're tight, you're really wearing yourself out or anything like that. Like you don't have to think about it. You're in this like comfortable environment. Like it's warm, it's cozy. You don't have like your phone there. There's no one else talking to you. You're not like, you're not expected to do anything else but shower in that moment. And so it like, to me, it's always just like a great place to like let my mind kind of wander and, and be free. So that's a big one for me. Yeah. I mean, I do, I, I'm not a huge exercise person and I don't, I'm sure that's come across in the podcast. Like I just, and especially right now I'm like, just not in, a, in an exercise space, but I think that one can be a really good opportunity. If it's something I enjoy, like if it's, if I force myself again to go out for a run, like it's not, I'm going to be so focused on that and being mad about the fact that I'm running that it's yeah. gonna like satisfy that for me. Um, talking to somebody conversations, a lot of, a lot of what I probably would lean towards too. No, I think that's great. Like, yeah, catching up with friends, talking on the phone, meeting up, being more mindful when you're there, slowing down. Um, mm -hmm. I love that hot shower one. I do that a lot recently because we do talk about, I'm like, yeah, I do think a lot in there. And then that you feel yeah. sometimes like you get writer's block and even in beyond, like you're not writing a book, but you're trying to keep fresh and have ideas and think about yeah. like, where do we want to take this business, this practice and mm -hmm. stay fresh? So let, let the ideas just flow on to me. Oh, yes. Walk, deep breathing, meditation, 
just like do anything you can other than like, let me just, I know what's happening. I'm going to try to redirect and all of that sort of thing. And then something else that I talk to patients about when they tell me again, kind of going back to that, especially that nighttime eating, that couch, it's like that couch habit, right? You sit on the couch, you watch TV and you're going to eat something. A lot of times I find that, um, especially if you have any kind of neurodiverse, if you have ADHD or anything like that, you want something to do with your hands at that moment. And a lot of times that translates into eating because that's like a tactile experience, right? And so I tell people, I'm like, find something else to do with your hands while you're sitting there and watching TV. Pick up crocheting, pick up knitting. Like I've done embroidery before and I need to pull it back out because I know for me, it's something that like, it's low stakes. I can do it as slow as I want. It doesn't, there's nobody like waiting. There's no deadline on it. I can sit, but it gives me something to do with my hands. Like while I'm also like watching TV because that, or I do like the New York times puzzles on my phone. Like oh, the, wow. I haven't been, I only do the Monday and Tuesday crosswords because the rest of them are too, really hard and I just have not gotten enough practice yet, but they oh, have wow. other daily puzzles that I do. So like That's just so something cool. else. So that I'm, my hands are occupied, basically. I like what you just said. Something that is low stakes. Something mm-hmm. that's going to stress you out. If running the thought of like putting your shoes on and going out there and doing a certain time and thinking about like, oh, you run so far and then you have to make it back and you just might not feel like it. Like if that's stressing you out, like all of those thoughts or whatever, then that is not, that's not it. Because then it's, you're going to go for the the low hanging fruit. Like let's yeah. go for whatever is easiest there as well. Mm-hmm. Um no doubt about that. No doubt about it. Now, there is also setting realistic goals, like the mm. thought that you're going to change everything that you do, all of your patterns, like you're never going to eat in the car again, you're always going to sit down at the dining room table, like some of that is not realistic. But we also talk about like, we are so, so, so good at the negative talk and about, you know, just beating ourselves up over every little thing, but we're not as good about pausing and be like, I did do that good. I did pass up on that ice cream bowl tonight. And that is a win. And the next day you're like, I feel better. I don't feel guilt. I probably slept better because I wasn't eating so late at night. Like all of the different things because of that decision that you made, that is deserving of kind of like patting yourself on the back in a sense, like celebrating that. Absolutely no matter how small it is. Seeking social support, you already said that, just helping you to stay accountable. We talk a lot about community. We have a support group. There is a reason why there is a support group out there for Mm -hmm. this weight loss journey, because it is a journey, it's never ending, it's people who get it. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that strength and numbers. And I don't know, I think that I love that as well. And always practicing self-compassion, you slip up, reserve the urge to beat yourself up because we are human and we are trying our best and just try to move forward with determination and then just try to slowly but surely get more consistent and -hmm. then it gets a lot easier it's like working any muscle you're next thing you know it's like okay I'm not reaching for that anymore and it's been three consecutive days a week a year and then you know people will say it's been 20 years sober and I celebrate Mm -hmm. that every single day that I go through that or it's this is just the same sort of thing it's you know however long you can go and it's going to be a daily kind of struggle with all of that kind of stuff yeah and then I think that to go along with that is that like not having the black and white thinking of like oh well okay so I did this for a week and then oh no I had the ice cream and so now I may as well just give the whole thing up right Mm -hmm. it's like nope you just you do it. You say, okay, how did I feel? Okay. I'm going to move on the next day. We're getting back on. We're, we're getting back. We, you're not letting it knock the, the train completely off the track. You just like maybe like stopped at a station for, for a night, you know, like you just hop back on and keep going along. Exactly. No, that's, that's it. Every day you just try to show up and some days are great and some days aren't and that's how life goes um we obviously have our project reset and um to me the reason why i wanted to talk about the emotional eating cycle is because i have attended some of the small group sessions led by laura um and i've heard what patients share and 
I, I see how she speaks to the patients and I just feel like the value that she gives in, again, helping people to really just give them personalized coping strategies based on the stories that patients get vulnerable and share. People have like their cameras on. It's a safe space. It's all confidential. Like we don't record them. We don't share them after the fact. It's, it's very small. It's intimate. It's interactive. We want people to feel like they can share their stories and then she can help them. Like this is your trigger. And you just saying that and having that awareness, that's a win in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Um, that you realize that and that you're even here and you're showing up and you're, you know, ready to level up that you Mm -hmm. want something better. You want to reset and you're seeking out some tools and additional, um, resources that are available to you to achieve breaking that cycle. And, um, I think that she just does an amazing job and they get a lot of other things out of it as well, all at the same time. And I think that is like the, the big first step that, Sometimes, you know, we've talked about the stages of change before, right? And and mm-hmm. where are you in this? Are you ready to like make a commitment and make a change and say, I'm going to stop this emotional eating. I'm going to recognize it and I'm going to put something in place. Or are you just like, you know what? I'm just in a place where I'm recognizing it right now. And that's enough. Like I'm going to recognize it. The behavior may not change quite yet, but I'm here and I'm like listening and learning. And then, okay, when am I ready to like make that next step? And when am I ready to you know, take that, what am I to figure this out? Sometimes it's that just that first initial awareness that, you know, epiphany we, you and I both just had during this whole thing. Exactly. We're, we forget those people listening, but we're having our own small group yeah. therapy sessions and uh-huh. we're using cognitive behavioral therapy strategies to help each other overcome our <laughs> emotional eating cycle. My Laura, friends, are, are you proud of us? Are you <laughs> listening to these words we're using? Who are we? We are learning and we are just getting that we just uh, launched it, and the best thing about the Project Reset, it is a rolling admission, so if you're like, oh, I want to do it, the limited time pricing is still, um, we're still honoring it uh, now, and if you acknowledge this down the road, I'll probably, yeah. you send me a text, I'll probably say yes, we'll, we'll <laughs> honor it, like we, Up on in. we want you to come, because we want yes. to give you something with so much immense value that it helps you on this. Like we said, life isn't easy, my friends. So whatever we can do to care for you. Special Dr. X dietitian price. Yeah. The never ending one. If you're a fan of this podcast and you're still with us on this episode, we're quite a few minutes into this bad boy. Um, (laughs) You deserve to have that, that promotional limited time pricing. (laughs) Absolutely. So I, I think there's, this is a, a much deeper subject. We are going to have absolutely, um, our blog will be about this, which will act as an episode guide that can, can help you so check out project reset too. look at all the different um, topics yeah. of the 12 sessions and, and how she really has a framework. She has some um, educational tips. There are teachings, there are pre uh, videos that we send out. You have some homework to do before each session so that you really come into that session to get the most out of it. So Mm -hmm. lots of stuff. So if you're feeling that you're not going to get 12 weeks of small group therapy strategies for 200 bucks and meal plans of weekly meal plans and all the things else that you get in there. I don't think you're going to get that too Uh, many other places. No, (laughs) we want you to take advantage of it. So, all right. Have we broken the cycle all in this one episode? I think so. I think we're, we're, we're healed. We're perfect now. No, we're perfect. no, life is so easy. Never. Excellent. Oh my oh, gosh. Lord. Well, take us out. Tell us how they yes. can get in touch with us, follow us oh. and get involved with our practice. As always follow us on Instagram at Dr. X dietitian. You follow me at Hannah Schuyler RD follow Dr. Dovek at Dr. Dovek reach out to us on body by bariatrics.com. There's a whole section on there about project reset. So if you go ahead, if you sign up on there, you just click to buy the project and then we'll be in touch with you uh, very quickly via text, via email. You'll get all the information to join and we just can't wait to help everyone through this cycle. If you find that you struggle uh, with any of these, just reach out. We're happy to help you. We got you. All right, my friends, until next time, uh, check us out, bodybybariatrics.com and we will see you soon. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.